Hello, everybody. How are you? I want to see my thought, my new thought. You see the hill, though. It's a new work. And I retouched my finger thought, my Afro beat. The Afro was kind of disappearing. So I redid it also, you know. I did not have this Afro beat tattoo on my hand. But the Afro was clearing, so I redid it. Did all these finger tats. Did it. Did it. Did it. We're just healing. So yeah. Hello everybody. How on a day. You know, um real quick, we'll talk on capitalism. And uh, frankly, as African people, since our connection to this system, our lives have been ruined you know, completely. Don't let anybody deceive you that it's only through capitalism that wealth is created. There's evidence of wealth in Africa before capitalism. Africans were extremely wealthy before capitalism. Extremely. When you hear all these stories, say, they bring glass to sell. Some African people were seeing glass. See, these were the peripheric. These were the net, the push people inside the peripheric of the kingdoms of Africa that were not fully inculcated into the tradition, the urban life of pre-colonial Africa. You know, we never like today gone as we did for Lagos. They call people they stay for village bush people. See their eye never open. You know understand? So people did for Africa like that with their eye never open. All the people who they call bush people today, who would they say bushman, you never open eye, they for village, village boy. You understand? Say they never see city life. They know me say they don't get king there now. They get king, they get administration, they get things where they rule them for there. Even they will be believe say their eye never open, reach our own for city. That's what it be that time. Now those kind of kings, they fought for those kind of things. You know, not be the there was wealth in Africa, stupendous wealth. In fact, poverty was inexistent. The first taste of African people with poverty was in Timbuktu. I think in about the 16th century, when the Arabs from Morocco took over Timbuktu, that was the first time black Africa, it was, it was recorded history. It was recorded history. I know I'm back come up for this life now. Go carry the book. So I go carry the book on read and for now. About the first time we encountered poverty in Africa, that people experienced what poverty was. And there's evidence that it was the first time. No, I did come. I'm gonna give me one minute. No, I don't need to go. I need to come up for the life. Paul! Who will be your sir? Who will be this sir? Which will be sir? I don't say when you call me this sir again, one day I will collect your salary. Your eye will open. But I don't know my name. Go up, go bring uh, my book with your top of bed. Come. Quick, 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 quick. No verse. No, I don't say, I don't say Paul. This is our household, they stay now. Our room, they up up more. All the yam for my leg, don't yam me fire. I don't need exercise again. Just climbing the step in this house up and down every day. The new house we are building now. I tell them, stay in the push space for lift. Because I don't say by the time I'm like 50 in the house, there's no way I'm climbing those steps. I don't tell them the push space for lift too. I can't keep myself. Yeah. I can find something for you. Because and I'll tell you now. 
The reason why it was the first time. We don't know anything. You don't understand. We never see her before. Poverty. The Tariq S. Dan stresses how exceptional poverty was in Black Africa when describing that caused by the Moroccan occupation of Timbuktu. How exceptional poverty was. Exceptional. You know what you mean when something is exceptional? It is so rare, so unseen, so incredible. It was an incredible thing. The Tari Let me start again. The Tariq S. Sudan stresses how exceptional poverty was in Black Africa when describing that, when describing that caused by the Moroccan occupation of Timbuktu. The high cost of food, and I want us to also see the resemblance of this situation hmm? in the 16th century to our existence today once we allow outsiders to control our land once we allow foreigners to occupy our minds when foreigners occupy your mind occupy your they, oh, anyway let me read it i won't read for now i'm not verse The high cost of food in Timbuktu was excessive. A great number of people died of hunger, and the famine was such that people ate the corpses of draft animals and of human beings. The exchange rate, dollar, exchange, dollar, dollar, dollar. So I want to understand, we had economies in Africa. We knew what exchange rate was. Our economy, they advanced. We get stock exchange. I'm telling you, we have all we had all this whatever. They didn't bring all these teachers, all these markets. Okay? That we are the number one market people. Nobody trade like Africans. You trade rich Igbo man. We are the number one when it comes to market. Say you believe, say one person can't teach us anything new. All they came to teach is exploitation, exploitation and appropriation and expropriation, alienation. This is their capitalist system. Mm -hmm. So, real quick. The high cost of food in Timbuktu was excessive. A great number of people died of hunger. And the famine was such that people ate the corpses of draft animals and human beings. The exchange rate fell to 500 calories. Then the plague came in. Then the plague came in turn to decimate the population and killed many that the famine had spared. The high cost of food, which lasted two years, ruined the inhabitants, who were reduced to selling their furniture and utensils. Reduced to selling their furniture and utensils. You understand, like, to sell your, they sell their property. It was, you see, like today now everybody's selling things, you can just say, they were reduced. All the elders were united. All the elders now. This is why I'm telling you that this is the first time Africans experienced it. Hmm? All the elders were unanimous in saying that they had never seen such a calamity and that not one of the elders before them had ever told them of anything like it. I repeat, all the elders were unanimous in saying that they had never seen such a calamity and that not one of the elders before them had ever told them of anything like it. I'm reading from Pre-Colonial Black Africa by Sheikh Anta Diop. Pre-Colonial Black Africa by Sheikh Anta Diop. That's why I'm just reading that from for you. So the moment an outside force because the Moroccans by then were no longer African controlled. They were already, you saw by the Ottoman Revolution, they had become completely Arab, invading Africa, invading Mali, you know, trying to go for the gold in Mali. You know. So let nobody deceive you. That's 
Europeans brought some kind of market innovation, whatever. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And also, many people say, if socialism is so good, how many countries are socialist today? We are the socialist countries not working. First of all, you must understand the difference between Marxist Leninist and socialism. Marxism, Leninism, is just a form of socialism. It's a form of socialism. You understand me? It is not socialism as a whole. Marxist Leninism is a form of socialism. Hmm? Socialism don't really exist thousands of years before Karl Marx was born. Before Karl Marx even knew within the book, socialism already existed in this world. Even Karl Marx himself said he was inspired by African societies to a large extent in formulating his Marxist theory to Europeans. If you are my age mates, somebody has said, bring back the Govara poster. I am bringing it back. When we moved to this house, I couldn't find it. I just found it like a month ago. So I define where I will fit put out for this new house now, where I will use as backdrop. So now we say I define it because I don't want just, you know, put out make it just the, you know. No worry, Che is back. Che is coming back. Che poster is coming back, for sure. For sure. You know, so. Well, I wait a bit. I need to send somebody a message. So yeah, sorry, I'm back. There's a difference between Marxism, Leninism. So if you're my age mate, for example, and you are 40, your grandfather in your village is a homeowner. You know if you tell me who he worked for to build a house or where they work to build a house. The world was socialized in many ways. And when you see which countries are socialist today, many countries in the world are socialist today. Portugal, for example, has a socialist constitution. I'm not talking of communist countries now. I mean socialist countries. Portugal is a good example of a country with a socialist. Now to bust your bubble, make a bust your brain, Nigeria, is a socialist country by constitution. If you read the Nigerian constitution, it is a socialist agenda. But in the wicked way of our elites, they add a clause that we cannot sue them to implement the socialist agenda of the constitution. I kid you not. Ez, I get lawyer for us. I they come. Ez, I beg, which part of our constitution forbid us from uh, fighting for Article uh, uh, Chapter Two. Yeah. Which part for Constitution the stop us from fighting for Chapter Two? Uh, six. Chapter Six, Abi. Uh, section Six or something. Share Section Six, Chapter Six. Uh, yeah. That's not Chapter Six. Section Six. Section Six, yes. Chapter Two. They come add Section Six for the Chapter Two. Yes. So we cannot sue for the government to implement exactly. So in the same chapter that socializes our constitution, our elites gang up with themselves, add one extra clause to prevent us from legally, from legally, I mean, not sorry, from judicially or constitutionally demand through the courts 
that the socialist aspect of the Nigerian constitution is implemented. Because even if our constitution say no group or individuals must be put interest must be put above the interest of the of any individual or any group that the gains of this country must be socialized is in our constitution but because our elite are capitalists they want to run a capitalist agenda by all means they ignore the spirit of our constitution You understand me? So, many people also ask, so not only Portugal, many countries in the world like that, you know, you can go to Google and see socialist countries. Google it yourself. China now, which is the, who is the most successful? Cuba. Let me go to Cuba. All of you think Cubans are suffering because they don't have Gucci and Rolls Royce and all these fancy things because of the sanctions placed on them. And that, I bring Cuba because when people say socialist countries don't work, I want you to know that the human side of every socialist country is working. The human side is mostly working in every socialist country. It is the market side that is sabotaged by the capitalist countries. It is sabotage that prevents socialist countries from competing economically. Economically with capitalist countries. In the human index, in the human side of it, no capitalist country can compare in the human side with socialist achievements, socialist countries' achievements. Cuba, for example, has a better life average, life expectancy than the United States. You can check it. The life expectancy of an average Cuban is higher than that of somebody in the United States. The average Cuban is more educated than the average American. You, you can check all these things yourself. Mundosi Shewu is talking. Purple says Shewu, all this talk, many men, all this talk, many men, what do you think the solution or problem is? What I'm telling you is we have to socialize. Are you, you see, people, when you don't tell them what they want to hear, this act like what you are saying you're not you're not like you're not talking or saying what the what the what they are saying they want to hear basically i'm telling you say the problem is capitalism and our solution is socialism don't be the solution i discuss so Capitalism can only bring modernization to developing country like our own. If you mistake modernization for development, then you are stupid because modernization is not development. So Cuba, another example, during COVID, lost less people per percentage than the, the, the United States lost more people than everybody. The most capitalist country in the world lost more people to COVID than anywhere else in the world. Why do you think that is? That the most capitalist country is where people die the most. And the most socialist countries are where people died the least from COVID.
how do you think that that was? That more socialist people died, more people died in the capitalist countries than the socialist countries. But because you guys want to wear Gucci, and socialism will not even stop you from wearing Gucci, what it will do is make sure that you make your own Gucci. Gucci will have plants here where they come and do business in the business world with just the way in China. They have all these brands everywhere. They even sell at a more expensive price at those places than. So this thing that we believe, who would they believe? Most of it is not true about capitalism. Yes, business in capitalist countries, business gets healthy, very healthy protection, healthy environment. Businesses grow well, and the people that own these businesses do well. But for the average people, the workers, the poor people, things are terrible. Things are terrible. Even in America, good look, how many people can, they say less than 60% of Americans can afford a home ever be able to afford a home less than 60 percent or rather 60 percent cannot up almost 60 percent rather of americans cannot afford their own home right now their health they can't afford health care just the same as everywhere but just to a different degree in capitalist countries you know china and the people say uh, Socialism, without capitalism, people will not want to invent. People will not want to. That's a lie. The first country to go to space was a socialist country. The first country to innovate, to go to space, was a socialist country. The Soviet Union went to space before everybody. The first people in space, Sputnik, Sputnik, yeah, Sputnik. Because what socialism, the kind of innovation which socialism would drive, that innovation will push humanity, we will progress humanity forward. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. And we as Nigerian people now, are, are they always surprised when Nigerians defend capitalism? Because since we encountered this thing, the lives of our people have been terrible. The lives of our people have deteriorated. We went from a people where all our grandfathers, the homeowners, to people where they live for streets. We went to, from Africans that used to live long life, long life, 80, 90, old people, to people that are dying in their 40s, dying in their 30s. Our life expectancy in Nigeria now is about 46. I'll be 47. And yet these same people continue to defend this system. A system now, 64 years, it will be 64 years this year that we have been under this system. It has not done one thing. Education, it cannot solve. Transportation, it cannot solve. Healthcare, it cannot solve. Housing, it cannot solve. Electricity, it cannot solve. Clean water, it cannot solve. Nothing. Security, it cannot solve. It has solved nothing. Yet, they defend just because they are expecting to be billionaire. The stupid thought of it. Look, I can't bust your bubble. If you are a millionaire like me, 
say you are a millionaire you get money you you, you have you still have more in common with a homeless person than you ever have with Dangote. You have more in common with a homeless person than you ever have in common with Otedola or Ilumelu. Or Herbert Wigui. Nigeria is having a final of Nations Cup. America is playing Super Bowl. Where are we going as people running Nigeria's industry? Where are we going to put our support? Super Bowl. Hmm. You have more in common with a homeless person than you do with these people. But because you believe in yourself, they don't, they don't brainwash you. You think. Then we think all these they are symbols, this luxury that is everybody's own. No. Luxury belongs to everybody. They cornered it as their own. In Africa, your number one right, as soon as you are born in Africa, the number one thing that is guaranteed to you is your piece of Africa. They must cut your land give you. That was our number. That was your right. It is the only right of human beings all over this world. To A piece of this world must be in your possession because you are part of this world. It is a spiritual thing. You are of that earth. So when you come, a piece of it is given to you to do as you please, to sustain, to live, to let that earth replenish you as you continue to replenish. It is a relationship. It's a spiritual connection. These people detach us, detach all Africans from their property. Claim it for themselves. You are defending that nonsense. Come, they come tell you, you have to earn a living. You that are already alive. And you believe. You where they don't burn. Where they are alive, we don't really breathe. Somebody tells you now you have to end your living. End my living from who? From who? The person that invented the life. The person that... People are here defending slavery. Not knowing that that's what you are defending. Thinking you are defending healthy competition. Healthy competition. A healthy competition. That competing with your fellow man, your fellow brothers and sisters. Nah, nah, something we you supposed to you, you, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. I'm number one. You're number two. And they like me more. They, 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 they. You choose that. You choose competition instead of cooperation. Socialism is cooperation. Capitalism is competition. Now those of you now that are better past everybody, now in love capitalism. Of which you are not even better than everybody or anybody. How can Africans, real Africans, true Africans, detach themselves, allow people to detach us? I said, I'm paying you salary. The same person paying you salary has stolen all the land. Right? The, all the land belongs to him. You are now working for him. He's not paying you salary. When he give you this salary, you pay for a house to stay that is on the land that he owns. 
you pay when you see go hospital that he built on the land and that he owns you will uh, take transportation on the land that he owns in the bus that he owns you will pay school fees built on the land that he owns on the school that he owns all the salary he give you, you go to a club built on the land that he owns the club that he owns buy the drink that he imports you don't say that you are free he, because you bought something that is yours already yeah you start laughing at those people that cannot afford to buy it or don't have the means <clears throat> to buy what is their own already that you, you are better than them. <laughs> oh, man. I said the Nigerian constitution, go and read chapter 2 of our constitution. So everybody is entitled to accommodation. Every, we are all, because they too, they know as Africa, in, in their heart, they know the truth. That's why they don't underestimate these people. You think that you are stupid men. You think you have more sense than Tinubu. You have more sense than Buhari. You think you have more sense than Atiku. You think you have more sense than Obi. You think you have more sense than... You don't have more sense than all these men. They are intelligent, but they are just highly crafty. Crafty men. They have their interests. But no, they don't know the truth. Uh -huh. They have their interests, but they don't know me say they don't know the truth. So what are we waiting for? We need power to implement that part of our constitution. That removes our education from the hands of capitalists. Because when you capitalize education, the result is ignorance. We remove our health care from the hands of the capitalists. Because when you capitalize health care, the result is massive sickness and drop and um, reduce life expectancy. Remove capitalists from our security so that we can no longer have, so that we can stop having insecurity. Because capitalists mixed with security is oppression, is repression, is who, sh who gave the order. That's why Africa no get soldier, no get police. Everybody was a warrior. Africa has had warriors. We don't know what to be soldier. Can't give all that to somebody. Just go and there must be reason. You are a warrior, born warrior to defend, to fight when necessary. But for the people, soldier follow order, warrior follows the people. Soldier follows orders, soldier protect the rich and elite, warriors follow the people. We need to socialize our understanding of the world as African people. And socialism doesn't mean you, you cannot make money. As I said, many Africans were stupendously rich in, under our socialist system. It just be say, you know, if you claim which thing be everybody own as your own. That's what socialism means. That what is for everybody is for everybody. What is yours? Yes, is yours. Create yours. When you create us, in fact, everybody will support you because you, you support us with the taxes you will pay. We don't want your charity. All these rich men, you know, hiding their money all over the world, telling you capitalism is for you to compete, survive on your own. If you fail, you fail. If you poor, you lose your house, you go on the street, you turn to a beggar. 
But when all the banks lost, when all the rich men lost their money in 2008, between that 2008 and 2011, 10 trillion dollars was given back to the rich people of this world from public money. That's socialism for the rich. Ten, what did they say? Okay, you compete, you lost. Hey, Goldman Sachs, you lost. Hey, First Bank, you lost. Hey, Nigerian government, do that. Name the Amcon, hey, the CISO. Niger, uh, Nigerian Debt Management Company, Amcon, Asset Management Company of Nigeria. The assets managed is dead though. That all these rich men borrowed. It's only 200 Nigerians, all about 30 trillion, a bit. But then, I mean, how much? Be only 300 and something Nigerians own oh about government about something trillion naira. Oh, the banks about something trillion. Toxic loans. They still keep all their mansion, their private jet, everything. They'll go seize one small house for their people will get over 400 houses. They'll go collect one small tachere bungalow somewhere. One duplex put side. This house is seized by anchor. So, why didn't they allow capitalism for themselves in stolen and eat? Let all the banks, that all the rich men that lost money, all the banks that are close down. Everybody face your warrant. It's the poor people that paid for it. Lost their homes, got on the street in Nigeria, who lost their businesses. Socialism came out immediately for rich people. They socialized the tax money immediately. So, eh? Please, oh, socialism, oh, don't let... They say they are too big to fail. They created a new word suddenly. I'd never heard it in capitalism before. Too big to fail. What's the meaning of that? When a system that has no principle is ready to camouflage, ready to bend and twist to fit certain people, but not bend and twist to fit other certain people, they know that system is oppressive. That's capitalism. They brought that too big to fail to quickly help all those rich people come out. You know? But when it's poor people, they don't say, ah, you are too poor to fail. If you fail more than this, you will die in poverty. Ah, too poor to fail. Help them, help them. Give them something to come back up. Mm -mm -mm. They never, they don't twist them. You fail, you fail, you are poor. Get out, you lose your job. Why did you lose your job? Why did you fight your guy? Because when they know that the you see homeless people every day. Those homeless people, suffering people, they are a silent threat. They are a silent threat to the majority of the workers. That if you argue with your guy, look at you. That's why they let you see them. That's why they don't do the housing. That's why they don't do the health care. So you can see the repercussion if you try to do strong head. We will come the fear. Instead of not knowing that all we have to do is to build bridges with these people. Come up from under this motherfuckers and build bridges with these people that they think can be nothing. Teach them dignity instead of begging that they should organize. And in the organization, that thing that they are begging for is already their own. But we too, we need them so that when we do all the barber things, we keep them for the streets. We we'll bring out 500, go we'll dash them. Bring out 1,000, go we'll dash them. Say, we are good people, we are good people, we are going to heaven. I've not seen the country where capitalism is working, you know, and I've not even seen the country where it is working uh, properly for black people, especially anywhere in the world, you know. So, yeah, yeah, that's my take on that. I just wanted to say that about capitalism, you know, because um, too many people talk a lot of shit about the thing as if it's some amazing thing that, but it's a lie. Didn't, capitalism did not cause anything to be invented, did not bring any, it just cause people to innovate to, so that they can exploit, allow people to inno, innovate to exploit, but never create anything for human advancement that will not be created in the socialist world, or that cannot be envisioned, you know, in the socialist mind, because socialist mind thinks about things that will benefit humanity, not bring profit. 
And that's not why our country never develop. Because all our elites think about what will bring profit, not about humanity. We as African people, we don't understand, see, talent cannot be divorced from development. Talent cannot be divorced from development. Our talent as African people cannot be removed from the development of our country. If Oyibo said they can't build bridges for here, that means those bridges don't exist. Because until African people can build those bridges, until we ourselves can build it ourselves, then that bridge no exist. It's a facade. Franz Fanon has taught us that in the wretched of the earth. That whatever road you see, bridge, building, that is not built by you, is not there. It's a facade. And every year in this country, we they graduate thousands of engineers. None of them can point to the bridge that they built from their school. We designed this in our school and we built it for our country. A group of Nigerian engineers. Now, like, you see one you put there within cap, packing orders. It just means for me, they give and whip. Me, they lash the Nigerians when they work for the site. As, so why are we graduating engineers? Mm -hmm. Why are we graduating engineers? If we cannot build our own bridges, fix our own things, build our own electrical appliances, have a standard for this country, you know? Our talents cannot be divorced from our development. This elite woman you think say, all your talents is just to make money, make money, and buy all the things money can buy. Then ma, when it comes to our country, they don't want to do anything except they can make money from it. If you say be doctor, don't treat anybody except you can make money from it. It's not about treating people, it's about making money. If you're a lawyer, it's not about fighting for justice, it's about making money. If you're a teacher, it's not about knowledge, it's about making money, exploiting your students. If you're a landlord, it's not about thinking about Com uh, affordable housing, landlord is not about thinking of comfort for your tenants. Landlord is about making money. Everything, making architect, you know about designing a new country, designing a new style for your country to let the air flow so your people can. Mm -mm, nobody's funding that, so it's for, it's looking for his own money. And all these things because the elites pass it down. They pass it down. You go to your churches, they tell you all this tribalistic nonsense, praise money, and insult one tribe or the other tribe. Talk one, go to the street, politicians will come outside, talk one thing, talk against another tribe. The North is doing this, sowing division. But go inside their capitalist ventures to make you feel like a rugged individual. Like rugged individual, individualism is victory. They spread division all over. Divide us any way possible. Man, woman, boy, girl, uh, Christian, Muslim, uh, poor, rich. Just divide any line you find, divide it and make it big and big and big. But go inside your capitalist company, you say, come together, cooperate. Then you say, compete with your full co worker, show them you can do this task better. Show this, no, everybody come together, cooperate to execute that, share ideas. We in Africa, we must stop falling for the capitalist okay dog. We are resources people, what do we need capital for? Because without capital, how can you be a capitalist? And we all know Africa has no capital. No capital. So how can we do capitalism with no capital? How can we do capitalism with no capital? It's impossible. We are resources people. That's how we can be socialists. We have all the resources we need. If you read, I've read, I've read that part to you guys when I came to talk about capitalism and poverty in Africa. We don't talk about before we are going to read this book where they talk about people that just want to be buying things and sh we are sh everybody in Africa wore gold. They wore gold. Everything, they're everywhere. People enjoy themselves. Because no, nobody needs to do big man over anybody else to feel important. Your importance came from your knowledge. You didn't do big man. Because big man, nobody's saying that one. Everybody, everybody did okay.
But now because you people don't have anything to show other than that you're a big man. You want big 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 man. The most important everybody's big man with nothing in the head. Big man without good character. Greedy big man. Big man that only does charity but does not pay tax. That's what they be they build gate to all these people. Pay the tax to your country. You won't need to give charity in a lie. The Bill Gates Foundation, Bezos Foundation, this foundation. Helping only the people that they want to choose to help. That don't accuse them or don't antagonize them. And they know that the country needs their tax money because they are the top. Without their tax money, things don't will happen for the country for poor people. For middle class people, we need things. Infrastructure will crumble. They will go hide all those money where they're supposed to take pay tax for different companies. They can't open foundation to make the money tax free back for their country. Pack the money, enter those foundations. Can't they pick people where they go help? Because they don't want to make it be say their money they for inside government, they help anybody, including those where they fight them. Are those the people that are doing something spectacular that we are looking up to? that they even do does it make up for the atrocities that they cost to make that money that they have no it doesn't it doesn't make up for it millions of people dying all over the world so these people can make this money that they have sacrificing the souls of people left right and center how about the destruction of nature under capitalism being the true enemies of the people So that's why I stand for completely for socialism for African people as the only way as the only way for us to achieve our development because if we wait for profit profit can never lead to development profit will only give us modernization if we don't take our talents as African people Instead of we could confuse ourselves with the next to be the next bank or tell the law, no way, Lord, this one. Mm. Nigeria cannot be developed by the profit incentive. I repeat, Nigeria cannot be developed by the profit incentive. Only the human incentive can develop this country. And human incentive lay under socialist ideologies. This rugged crony capitalism, rugged individualism that our elites practice and teach to the people of this country will only modernize Nigeria. It will never develop Nigeria. They will build more hospitals, Nigerians will have less health care. We have more schools, we will have more ignorance. I always say it. We will build more, employ more police, we will have more insecurity. We will build more houses, we will have more homelessness. I mean, there are more houses, erect buildings, standing in Nigeria today than 1960. But there's more homeless people in Nigeria today than 1960. How come? That's capitalism. So those things will affect our life. This is what I'm saying, that we don't have, allow, have to allow people to take advantage of the things that affect our life for them to become rich. Let's take those things that belong to us, that is our right as Africans, and remove it from people's need to make profits. Let those seeking profit make their profits in the business world. Let them come up with ideas. Let them innovate. It's ideas that compete. Compete with people's ideas. Don't put people in competition with each other. Life is not a sport. We can't live our life like it's a sport. Looking for winner and loser. No, life cannot be about winner and loser. That's why it is called sports, not life. That's why it is called sports, not life. Life is about cooperation. 
understanding, togetherness. So they modernize everything. They build all this, they are building, yet your people are homeless. What's the point of it? So Nigerians today complain about the economy of this country. We must first of all ask ourselves, what kind of Nigeria, I repeat, is selling food that his people cannot afford? Selling petrol that their people cannot afford? Selling data that their people cannot afford? Building houses and putting rents that people cannot afford? That the majority of their people their own people. What kind of people sell food at the prices that create hunger in their own land? What kind of people sell food at the prices that create hunger in their own land? In their own land, not that they are creating hunger elsewhere and for other people, for their own people to eat. No, their own people. One of my sisters here say women still have to buy sanitary pads. Man, I don't want to talk about women. Because that's how I know that African men have... When our women say, you want women to respect you. As I said about the elders, the African men also don't deserve any respect from African women. If you know, African men do. We African men, the real African men. But you Europeanized African men, Arabized African men, what, what respect do you want women to respect you? You keep them subservient. What you want them is what you want is submission. Submission comes without questioning. It's Africans that deserve respect because respect comes with questioning. You have to earn respect. Our uh, women, do you know what it means to be a poor woman in Africa? At least a man, if you are poor, if you feel bad, brush your teeth. You come aside, wear t-shirt and your singlet and uh, one short nick and slippers. They also your day. Women have to make hair. They are forced because they don't make their head. You see, they are, they are, they are, they are unkept. Many, all these fake beauty standards that the capitalists have imposed on women by force makeup, lipstick, lip gloss, earring. Before a woman can even come out of her house, what she has to spend when she's on a period, sanitary pad. What poor women have to go through. A poor man doesn't have to go through what poor women go through. Poor women are the most... Especially when you are poor and black in this world, as a woman, that's the worst position. And when we put our women in such a position where to be a black, our own women is the worst position in the world. Then how can we as African men, or this, wherever we are in this place, say, we respect us, we want them to submit. And I'm happy that our women are not submitting. Even if majority of them are resisting along the wrong ideology, they are resisting back into the ideology that is causing where they are in the first place. But when they will get sense, they will resist with the right ideology. But I appreciate to a certain extent they know something is not right and that they know that they are resisting something. But soon they will understand and not resist. Say they are resisting. They are re using what they, they are resisting to go to where they are already no they will now understand how they must pan-africanize and be the ones to bring the energy back into pan-africanism because you know without the women the movement cannot succeed you know so yeah that's what that's 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 the main main thing about poverty and women so bad for them you know and we african men sit back and look at our women in this situation uh, you respect me. Ire. Ire. You know, so. As I was trying to make my last point, the truth is, Fela is the example I'm going to use here, and not because he's my father. He's just the one that all of us will understand. He had talent. He made money. 
Some of the money he made I'm still eating it today. Some of the things he did I'm still eating from it today. But he still used that to serve his nation. Our talents must be for the development of our nation. Socially. That is socialism. That you understand that you are put here to use the best of yourself for the benefit of everybody, not just yourself. That is socialism. You understand? And we must understand that. And that is where Nigeria will begin to develop. Where we as the people, because these are our elites will never do it. We come together to be the new elite of our society. Elite in the sense that we take control of where our society is going. Not to become elitist. Thank you very much.